Nigeria has signed the instrument of accession of the agreement for the establishment of the African Trade Insurance Agency. The agreement and the agency are registered with the Secretariat of the United Nations in accordance with Charter of the United Nations and its cognizance of the fact that lack of adequate political, non-commercial and commercial risk insurance is a significant impediment to the availability of finance for investments in Africa and the expansion of Africa foreign trade and intra-Africa trade. That will be the focus of diplomatic ties. What implications for Africa? What implications for the West African sub-region that talking about ECOWAS? Also, what implication for global trade and ties among nations? My guest on the program is a trade and international economic lawyer, consultant to ECOWAS and president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, Ken Okoha. The program continues just after this time out. Stay with us. Let's begin by saying establishment of the African Trade Insurance Agency. What is it all about? It looks a bit fuzzy out there. Uh, thank you very much for um, putting out time to discuss this particular subject matter. And I think uh, kudos to NTA for bringing this to the table so that the um, majority of Nigerians would understand it is one thing to sign an agreement, but it's also another thing for people who on their behalf an agreement has been signed to understand the contents of such agreements and understand the implications on their lives and livelihoods and the future of the nation that is theirs. In 2000, and I think I need to give a little background to Brief. this particular <laughs> agreement. In 2000, year 2000, COMESA, the common market for uh, East and, and uh, Southern African countries, they met and looked at the fact that for over a decade, investments have not been coming in to their regional economic community, the regional bloc. And so they were worried and started discussing that. And they decided to set up uh, you know, a kind of survey. They commissioned the study, which was paid by the World Bank. And when the study came out, it showed vividly that the political terrain was not really attractive for investments. And therefore, there were some you know, hiccups in terms of people having the courage to invest in the two regions that are matched to one. And so, what they did was to look at the solution. And the solution was in 2001, they set up the ATI, the African Trade Insurance, as an agency. It was an agency meant for that particular RIC. But with time, in 2006, the mandate was expanded. And what is it for? To ensure that there is a guiding principle for ensuring that investments that are attracted in the home of Africa are not frustrated. Ensuring that risks are born. Ensuring that capital are secured. Ensuring that goods are also secured. Ensuring that investment capital essentially are well secured, including freight that comes in from other parts of the world. And that's it. But now that the AFCFTA is being talked about, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is being talked about, many African countries are trying to see what do we do to ensure that investments that are coming courtesy of the AFCFTA are really properly guaranteed are really given the kind of background and foundation that will be kept and made use of efficiently. And that's why many countries have been knocking at the door of the ATI. But good enough. I think Nigeria is in this direction to be given a thumbs up. That 
year 2019, just last year, Nigeria paid about uh, $14 million uh, to the AFDB, African Development Bank, to have an entry into that. Nigeria is not the only country that has paid, but Nigeria worked so hard to make sure that the door was opened and Nigeria is today a member, fully fledged member of the ATI. Okay, now that President Muhammad Buhari, in his wisdom as the leader of the country, has signed this and the gate is open to Nigeria, the question one will ask is before we go to Nigeria, what implication for Africa? The implications for Africa, for ATI, are so huge. One is that the people that you are doing businesses with, now have the assurance that their capital, their, the, 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 their wealth that they are bringing to your domain is secured. It is like what we have here with the central bank and the Nikon, I mean insurance. Okay. So it, that is exactly how it works. And you know, that my investment is not lost. In case anything happens to it, I have my funds. And don't forget, and I think, I think it's very important to let you know, the shareholders of this particular ATI includes the World Bank, the IMF, the African Development Bank. It includes about 10 countries. In fact, if you come to the southern part of the, of, uh, the hemisphere in Africa, you only have Côte d'Ivoire. Nigeria is going to be the second now. And so... There is a retenance of that trickling of water in terms of investment that comes in. So Nigeria now, anybody who is investing in Nigeria is no longer going to look at the crisis in the north. Insecurity anywhere. What you look at is what is my benefit. And whereas you see, as soon as you see your benefit, you launch in. Because there is a guarantee. If anything happens, your investments are secured okay. by insurance. Before we go into other areas, let's now narrow down a bit. We have looked at a bigger picture for Africa. Can we look at it from the perspective of ECOWAS and Nigeria? Now, for ECOWAS, whereas we now have two countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria, that I mentioned earlier. Well, that's the only two countries have these are in countries, Africa. Yes, for, for, for West Africa, for ECOWAS. Okay. Now, and that are members, you know. So now that Nigeria has signed on to the membership with all the powers and the full, you know, benefits of membership, anyone who is doing business, essentially under the AFCFTA, where you are going to have a monumental increase in business activities and investments coming in, courtesy of the 1.2 billion African population, there is a guarantee. And therefore, people will want to, people, when I say people, that's people both internally for domestic investments and for foreign investors. There is a guarantee. There is that attraction. Let us go. Let us go. And therefore, for the government of Nigeria and for that of ECOWAS essentially, it is an arrow that shows that there is, this is the direction of investment that is more secured than any other. And so it's an automatic attraction there, automatic magnet that draws investors to this particular end. It is not as if that, I mean, people are not going to look at insecurity. No, 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 I'm not saying that. People who are investing must also look at the direction of that is more secured in terms of, you know, crisis. However, when you drop your funds, when you drop your technology, when you drop your equipment, you are guaranteed because this is it's under security that whatever happens to it, there is an insurance coverage. A premium is on it. Okay. You are the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders. Are your members, first of all, conscientized to know the implication of this, both locally and the ones in diaspora, so they can catch into it? To be honest with you, this agreement was just signed, uh, you know, uh, 
the president just signed onto it last week or that's okay there so a couple of weeks a ago. couple of weeks ago and um I, I i think one of the things that we are doing is to understudy this and then begin to reel out um i mean you know the, the sensitization mechanism towards our members and don't forget that there is no country in africa where you head into that you do not see nigerian traders in the markets and elsewhere doing their businesses legitimately forget about what you hear from our side all that negative things that you hear about nigerian traders i mean that are outside the shores of this country is because of envy and jealousy because of the enterprising spirit that god has given to us but having said that i think that the onus is on us and also on the government to begin to interpret the content of this agreement and then to understand the implications so that people will know that whatever they're investing in any part of Africa is guaranteed. And more so in guaranteed in Nigeria. Now, now, take an instance. Your goods are coming from Nigeria and you want to sell them in South Africa. You have put them in a vessel heading to South Africa. These goods must be insured. There must be a guarantee that whatever happens to the vessel, the goods, your wealth, is also insured and guaranteed okay. and protected. So that's the implication. And therefore, we need to let them understand that, look, you have to move more goods from here. Do not depend on goods from third party countries, from Asia, from Europe, from America. You can pull goods from here and then deposit them in the countries where you are and become ambassadors of Nigeria on the AFCFTA. And in doing that, the country will also need to call upon the government to ensure that there is more security and, in fact, more support for this window of oppression so that these traders will see themselves as ambassadors assisting the country to mobilize her goods and then to offload their, go their goods and get more, wreck more revenue into the country. And that's where we need them. Okay, let's look at it from the perspective. I know very well that this is an African thing, but United Nations is involved. Now, where is the place of the EPA? Nigeria is not easier to sign the Economic Partnership Agreement because it said that uh, uh, WTO was, was in violation, it was in violation of the WTO uh, treaty, right? So, on what correlation is this with EPA? Will this in any way make Nigeria now to think of signing EPA? No, this is, this has nothing to do with the EPA. Okay, this I'm just being nothing. curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this has nothing. This uh, security does not have anything to do with the Economic Partnership Agreement. Okay. However, however, I think I would on this platform say that the doors of Nigeria is open. I'm not holding brief. But the doors of Nigeria is open that any day the European Union knocks at the door and says, please, gentlemen, let's look at this a second time. And of course, we've called upon them, the EU. Let us look at this agreement, the contents of the agreement once again. If it is favorable to you, then we can sign a, I, I mean, a bilateral agreement and then move up. But because I, 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 I can tell you that for some years now, the whole thing has been d delayed and dulled over there, nothing, nothing is being done. That's why the fact that Niger uh, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire and all the other countries have signed, and Nigeria did not sign, but the implementation, where is it? So it tells you that it is Nigeria that the whole world, in terms of EU, West Africa, trade relationship, has been waiting for. And if this big elephant wakes up any day to sign this agreement, then an EPA has come to Play. the African continental free That's trade area. Okay, beautiful. Let's look at the domain of World Trade Organization. How will this in any way show up Africa within the WTO? Yeah, uh, you see, the more there are African countries that are involved in this, the more the morale, the more the integrity, the prestige, the honor of Africa rises because you know like i mentioned earlier when you know that we observe rather that imf is involved as a shareholder african development bank is involved 
World Bank itself is involved. Uh, there are countries that are involved. In fact, Italy is also involved as a shareholder. And in fact, I think he's, an Italian is the vice president or so. So, um, so when, when you see that, what you will begin to think of is that at the world trade, at the multilateral level, everybody understands that, look, investments in Africa is more, getting more secured. Investments going to Nigeria, which is one-fifth, I mean, more than one-fifth of the whole of Africa, is more secured. Because yeah, if you're talking about, Af about Africa, you cannot conclude that talking about Nigeria. And if Nigeria is involved in this for security reasons, then the world trade is also talking about it. Will it in any way narrow the ambience of global competitiveness, like the developed and the undeveloped? No, I, I don't think so. What it rather does is what we talked about in the attraction of investments, attraction of investments, okay. investment flows. Nobody wants to invest where you don't have security of your investments. And by the time you are insuring your investment, it adds volume to your security okay. and the security of your investments. It appears as if the fund you have invested is still in your pocket. So if anything happens, you can put your hands in your pocket and still get it like a magic. So that's exactly what it is. It's like, um, you know, what we have here, domestic investments where, and that's one of the things that we've been crying about. We have domestic investments running into several billions of dollars in our markets, local markets here in Nigeria. It's scattered around. But, you know, each time there is any fire incident, Billions are smoked away. What you will also understand is that over 98% of these markets are not insured. And that's why we've been talking with government. So that's the, the bigger picture we're looking at That's the at bigger here. picture. That's, I, I mean, I'm giving you an illustration of what is happening. For, real, for, for us to understand how it, it's, you know, embolts into our own domestic economy. So looking at it further, who gains more? The primary produce exporter or the secondary produce exporter? No, everybody, everybody enjoys the benefits, okay. including the country. Because all of these people who are transacting the businesses are also meant to pay taxes. And don't forget, they are paying duties. Whether import duties or export duties, they are paying. And therefore, the country is also smiling to the bank. <laughs> okay, by extension, this has to do with innovativeness, entrepreneurship, enterprise, uh, job creation, uh, labor employ employability. The Nigerian government just uh, inaugurated uh, the Nigerian inv uh, Youth Investment Fund. How will the Nigerian youth catch on to this? Maybe those of them who are thinking about going into export. How will your association help them latch onto this to benefit? There's a program we've just started. And that program is looking at entrepreneurship in the area of export dynamics. And we are taking younger people to understand that you know um, many of the people who have been doing businesses those semi literates they have been breaking even so if as a, a graduate you come in there then the sky is your limit so we are trying to extend the kind of lessons and teachings and education sensitization to these young graduates so that they become entrepreneurs for themselves and not begin to look for you know ties and white collar jobs <laughs> go and produce something and then export it there is a space by next year west africa will be heading to 450 million population west africa alone the 15 member countries of west africa and we'll be looking at african you know continent beyond 1.2 billion population so if you look at Nigeria, beyond 200 million population alone, and you want to restrict yourself to the Nigerian market, you already have a tentacle to flow. Not to talk about when you now latch on to exporting to, you know, the uh, Republic, exporting to um, Niger Republic, exporting to Ghana, exporting to Cote d'Ivoire, exporting to Mali, exporting to Senegal. There are a lot of things that we can share in common. And the secret is this. There is no country in the whole of West Africa that has the kind of both financial muscle, technological muscle, 
and industrial muscle than Nigeria. Okay. And therefore, there is an advantage. And that's why some of us are also talking about the, you know, the, 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 the prolonged closure of the border. We have done it rightly by closing the border and sending signals to those who are smugglers and operating you know, negatively on the country, oppressing the country. But then, there's a time to also open the border, especially now. And now is the time. You know why? Because if you don't do this, you are not creating an incentive for those who are doing the right thing, for those who are doing right exports, legitimate businesses. You are there for punishing the legitimate business, you know, transactors and actors and practitioners alongside smugglers who are criminals. So we need to open the border, but importantly, that's why the ATI comes in now. Okay. The African Trade Insurance comes in. Okay. Now, is there any kind of compensation mechanism for those who did legitimate business and their goods have been at the border from 20th of August 2019 up to this moment? Re relatedly, let's, let's look at it from the place of safeguards. As Lufthansa has disappears, is it possible that if safeguards are not in place, maybe the African traders will be so changed. For instance, both for the wisdom of ECOWAS and the wits of Nigeria, we will not have known the loopholes in EPA. And Nigeria maybe will have gone blindly and signed. Are there areas we need to look at critically before we get involved, before our people are so changed? Well, I, I think we have already gotten involved because the president has signed. Okay, yeah. It. yeah. Okay, we are involved. Uh, yeah, we are, yeah, we are involved already. already. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. But then, but then we, we must also understand that there is a difference between the ATI and uh, the, which is an instrument, by the way, and um, a, a, a regional trade agreement. And um, it's also important for us to understand uh, as well that Nigeria uh, was, was rather the one that made ECOWAS not to jump into the river, into the ocean. Okay. in terms of uh, you know what you mentioned the epa I, I i think nigeria was opening the eyes of ECOWAS regularly on the subject matter let us have an analysis it's just like the ASCFTA that we eventually signed and some of us dragged nigeria and said no, we, no 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 you don't sign mr president don't sign yet let us understand the implications let us understand the cost and benefits for us and now that we understood everything through radical studies that showed clearly what we're going to gain and what we're going to lose. And then we were now the ones to take decisions that, yes, we can sign, we can join, but we can negotiate this way. Okay. Let's place a compass that will help us to navigate. Okay. And that's exactly what we did. Can this also add value to the much-anticipated uh, or talked-about eco? Well, the, I've not thought about this, but I think... Um, Echo is a currency of ECOWAS. for ECOWAS. Yeah. And um, businesses are done through currencies, exchange. And if we are talking about insurance, it is also currencies. But insurance of this level, this magnitude, goes beyond the currencies. It goes into the protection of investments okay. beyond the currency. Just before we go, in just one sentence, the present administration under President Mohamed Buhari came under three major planks, economy, security, and uh, the fight and against corruption. corruption. Let's look at the economy now. Would you say with all this, it's a plus plus for Nigeria? It may not be a plus plus. It may be a plus. I have not seen the, the added plus. It may be a plus because, number one, um, Nigeria is, I stand to be, uh, you know, queried. Nigeria is one of the first countries I've ever known that went into recession and came out the same year. Uh, never in the world. Yeah. Never. Go and ask Japan. Never. In fact, if you doubt, if anybody doubts, go and find out from what you are going to see from, uh, you know, UK. You know, the kingdom entered into recession a recession few days back. Yeah. We will watch and see. But then, we have seen a situation where some radical decisions in the economy have been taken, including this border closure that we talked about now. 
I told you that they also have their own implications, sure. positive and negative, advantages and disadvantages. But I also have been in the school of thought that I've believed that the positive outweighs the disadvantages. And can I tell you this, that if you look at the compass, you will see where our agriculture sector is moving. Although we have some stagnations regarding insecurity, regarding issues of climate change, regarding, you know, banditry and, you know, all of that in the northwest, northeast, and now north central. However, if you look at the production of rice, for instance, where Nigeria was dumping a lot of fund, importing one food item, you will see that the arrow has changed. The level has changed. The gear has changed. Well, you know, for COVID, I am very sure that in the next one or two years, Nigeria would have been self-sufficient and then trying to export. Ken Kowa, always a pleasure talking with you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. That's it on Diplomatic Ties. We looked at the Africa Trade Insurance Agency, the involvement of Nigeria with the endorsement of it by President Muhammad Buhari. We looked at the implications for Africa, implications for ECOWAS, implications for uh, Nigeria, and indeed the global trade implication. Well, that's it on the program. We believe why it lasted, we enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.